This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Delta Green role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The scenario is The Last Equation. It was written by Dennis Detweiler, and it's available from Art Dream Publishings. Our handler is Sham Sabin, and this is episode two. Our recap will be given by Julian Arba as his character agent, Goat. But before we begin, we do have a new patron. Daniel Caspers has pledged three euros a month to our club. Thank you so much, Daniel. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Julian? Thank you, Tom. What a shit show I found myself in. I'm walking across a lawn in North Alliance, New Jersey, posing as an FBI mathematician as a circus of reporters are taking my picture. Over there is where Michael Way killed his last victim and himself. A series of numbers were painted on the street that apparently have some kind of paranormal qualities. Agent Grant took care of that. In the house behind me are the rest of the Ridgeways, also murdered. Open and shut case, Agent Canner says. We'll see. Some power this number must have to possess someone in such a way to act like this. This number... Nines, twos, one, eight, some threes. And all very strange coincidence is that this number, this house, this family, numbers keep popping up. Maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it isn't, but it's odd. So what's the mission? Well, Operation Eopetus. Destroy the number, determine if the number has been distributed, probably, and create a cover story. And what a task that's going to be with all this attention. <laughs> Get the camera out of my face, please. Get it out. No, no comment. Go away. No comment. I don't know how we're going to do it. Compounded by the federal agents working this case, and the impending arrival of a real mathematician, I'm gonna have to find out, figure out if I can bullshit my way past her, because I'm no mathematician. But I tell you, if we can pull this off, this will be the greatest hat trick no one will ever know about. Thank you, Agent Goat. Now, uh, where we last off, where we last left off, it was 9.15 p.m on the night of October 12th, right as Goat, Grant, and Brain Freeze were um, exiting the Ridgeway house, going down the driveway to leave the property. The media barraged them with a sea of questions and flashing cameras. Being a Delta Green agent, having this many photos taken of them, and knowing that this photo shoot is probably going to end up on the news provokes a sand roll against helplessness uh, for the three of you being photographed. It's not a bad one. It's just a zero one. But let's see if you pass or fail. Brain freeze, goat, and grant. It's a pass. You're fine. You've been in worse. Uh, you cover, you've zipped your face up with that. Yeah, I've got my hoodie on. It's going to give you a bonus on this next roll. How you do, brain freeze, goat? No, if you fail, it's just one. Um, unless that one makes you hit your breaking point, that is a check mark for helplessness. As you feel particularly helpless in this situation, as you know these photos are going to start circulating. Uh, after that, um, the three of you, I also want you to attempt luck rolls. 
Grant has a plus 20% bonus because he has gone through extreme efforts to cover his face. I got a 50. Oh, is that a pass or a fail? Uh, even without the 20%, that would be a dead-on success. So Goat has succeeded. Luck rolls in Delta Green or just the coin flip. You pass, Max? Okay. What about you, Grant? Oh, pass. Good. Okay, good. All of you are having these photos takes of you. All of you feel anxious, some more than others. But there's still a degree of confidence, especially in Grant's case, with only his glasses poking out being visible. Assuming Grant has glasses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um with that i mean they are i mean you're walking your way out of the crime scene and they're barraging you with questions um what would the three of you like to do uh litton and monocle you two are both in the crowd uh seeing all of this i was actually heading back towards the car to okay. rejoin them when they get there Okay, so by now you've definitely slipped into the car and gotten it started. Okay. Um, if you so desired, I mean, if you went through the effort to approach the lines and honk your horn a few times to make people get out of the way, you could get right up to the tape and just open the doors to get them in. Your vehicle does have tinted windows. Okay. I'll 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 do that. I will pull up slowly and uh burp, burp. give it a honk uh the people get out of your way i mean obviously there's some journalists that are obviously being like this car is going to pick up the federal agents and they're heading this way to get them but i mean tinted windows is enough to be able to be like eh, i'm not super worried about these cameras on me but it certainly does not feel good whatsoever but you pull up to the tape um, open one of the back doors. What about you, Monocle? What are you doing right now? Yeah, I'm I'm getting out of here too. I'll I'll shove one of the cameras as I slip in and just yeah hop in. Just the, seat. oh, just, yeah. as the camera oh, falls to the ground, there's a cracking blast and there's a guy going like, oh, what the hell? You broke my and then you get the door and shut yep. shut it. <laughs> Man, it's terrible out here. I can't believe this. I've never been on such like a high profile case. Normally, I'm just like at a desk like you know researching it's uh i mean are you kind of used to this Lydon? this is right oh. when goat brain freeze and grant are hopping in as well they uh they took me out of all databases so they can take all the pictures of me what they want i'm just mystery man yeah i mean i don't care about being famous or something but it's, we got a job to do well i mean they won't find anything if they ever want to research who the guy in black is yeah talking not... about pcp let them uh, let them speculate all they want. The more they speculate, the more nonsense they're going to run into. Now, as you guys pile into the car to then be like, oh, where do we want to immediately head right now? We've um, got to go back and establish a headquarters, don't we? Share yeah. you to you the uh, immediate map of Alliance. As you can see, the Ridgeway crime scene is right by New Jersey State Route uh 55 and on the other side of the highway is the garden state bulb company as new jersey is known as the garden state you head down garden road from the ridgeway crime scene to this super rate right, that's a, about a kilometer give or take alliance pd and the motel six where the um uh Kenor mentioned that he and gant were staying there at this point in time uh, Alliance is not a big town. Uh, this cent area right here is pretty much where all the little restaurants, shopping centers, and the handful of gas stations are. We really don't want to stay at uh, Motel 6 if they're yeah, there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Is, is there, there another hotel? No? <clears throat> you know, uh, Ramada Inn or... Uh, there's just in the immediate area of Alliance, there's only that opposing Super 8, but you always could go, like, to the east or to the west or to the next town over if you wanted to put some distance between you and them. Well, I just well, want to stay in the same place they are. We, we're going to need to go to that college campus, right? We could try to make a base in between the locations. Yeah, there's got to be um, there's got to be little motels and stuff for mom and dad to stay at when they're coming to visit their kids in college. Right. 
So, yeah, we'll find a Ramada Inn or a I think it might Holiday be a good Inn. idea to have at least one person in the motel where the FBI agents are staying to keep an eye on them. Or is the, do you guys not agree with that? I'm, I'm sure. not good at and, recon. We I'm still just, need the camera. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, we do need to keep get the camera. Yeah, um, yeah, that that seems most pressing, right? Like, huh. uh, we need to we, we need to tamper with their evidence. The the I, police department here. We don't have to stay in the hotel, the Motel Six, but do we drop Litton off? Oh, you're you're okay. talking about the the feds. The feds took pictures that we got to deal oh, with. Yeah. By the way, okay. as you guys have left the camp, the the crime scene. Gant is still in the house. He has not yet left. Okay. Okay. Uh, I thought he was leaving. So uh, where he, is he's the working camera? on it? Like from what you were talking to him before and what he's working on, he's cleaning up, quote unquote, cleaning up the site. But as an authority figure, it's still probably going to be a. I mean, not a long, long time, but it's still going to be a bit before he leaves, based on what you've seen so far. So the question is, is you said there's a camera with photos on it of the number? Yep. And where is that that photo? Where is that camera now? That's around... Um, is that in Gant's hands? Gant's hand. It's, yeah. yeah, it's around his neck. Yeah, quite literally strung around his neck. And they're staying at... Uh, at that uh super eight hotel. yeah oh they're staying, staying at the motel six they're staying oh. at motel six the, su oh, the super eight is what's um from what Kinnor told you he gant and okay, eventually at... comox would be at the motel six once oh. you drop me off at motel six yeah uh you guys go establish uh headquarters and then i'll call you when you can come pick me up I don't know how yeah. long it'll take. I have to find the opportunity to get to that camera. Is it a digital camera? This stuff hasn't like been transmitted directly um, to Quantico it, it, or anything it, like that. Based on what you've got, it, it looks like it's definitely more of a digital rather than just like a Polaroid or something. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, you have you have but no idea whether it's been uploaded to Quantico or not. Well, it, it's not on their phone. It's on a, it's like the, in between the, the little digitals. All right. So it probably has, and it's probably on a little card. If we, All right. even if, if we got a strong magnet next to that card, it would completely blow it up. Yeah. Um, I'll think about that, but I don't know what I'm going to get. I don't know if they got Radio Shack around here. <laughs> you want to Walter White it? Exactly. Microwave. Well, Leave it to me. Microwave, microwave. But they have a microwave in the, the room. All right, I'll take care of it. Okay. Just drop um, me off there. You are dropping off Agent Litton near the Motel 6 on the west end of Alliance. Uh, situated at 89 Garden Road, uh, this seedy single-story motel has... Uh, rooms 1 through 12 visible. They advertise continental breakfast, Wi-Fi, and cable TV. Uh, rooms 1, 2, 11, 12, 3, and 8 all have occupied signs on them. But the vacancy sign is still lit. Now, is there any way I can figure out which room they're in? Uh, um, let's see. Um. They don't have like a hotel. There is one hundred percent like a federal looking BU car parked nearby. This is the car that you saw that tall African American man with the age other agents have told you to be Agent Knorr that he drove that. I'll wait. That, I'll wait that until park that car is parked near the first three rooms. Rooms one, two, okay. and three, and the hotel office. I will place myself in a position where I'm in the shadows, maybe on the other side of the parking lot, looking in this direction. I'll just wait for him to show up and see which room he goes into. Okay. Um, since you're taking time uh, to put in this with your stealth score of 50%, I don't see a need to roll to just go and find a hidey hole to just try and yeah. look for a I'm, I'm dressed all in black. So. X individual arrives. 
So the other four agents, what are you doing at this point in time? It's like 9.25 p.m. I mean, well, I we, would. Oh, go ahead. I was just. Where are we headed? I thought that we were going to go to, maybe a few of us set up a base in between here and the university, and then the other two go hit up the dorm, to uh, make sure there's no extra numbers there, which there probably will be, to be honest. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with uh getting some more work done tonight. The dorm is uh forty minutes away. Um, oh, two hours from it's here. Two hours, yeah. Oh, uh, much further. It's um, a whole... Is it is it Columbia? Columbia University, yes, it, in Manhattan. It's, it's, a, it's in Harlem, isn't it? Close to. It's in Morningside Heights, which is like to the west of Harlem, but it okay. is not not far at all. Like you cross the campus, you cross a park. And a couple streets, and then you will be in Harlem, but it's not quite Harlem. What time is it right now? Nine twenty-five p.m. Okay, sun is set for hours. If you guys went, it, you're. I mean, even if you gunned it right here, right now, it's going to be pretty much eleven thirty late at night by the time you guys get there. Yeah, and believe well, me when I say I am very familiar with the uh, exhaustion rules. If you decide to pull all nighters, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm almost ready to do this. I mean, because we need to beat the media there. Yeah. We need to beat the FBI, other, you know, legit FBI agents. Um, Who's going to talk to you at midnight? Well, we the, need the thing is midnight. that um, we we don't know what room he's in. Because, yeah, if, if we knew the exact spot, then, yeah, we could just bust in, rip the place apart, and leave. If it's a dorm... You... Uh, this is something I'm going to say just because you were experienced Delta Green agents and some of you are officially on the FBI case. It would look really weird if at one point the FBI officially didn't investigate there. So at some point, one way or another, the FBI, whether that's you guys or Gant and Kenor, is going to have to go there. Right. And that's... Well, I was just, is it a dorm? Did we establish that? So all you really know is you, you haven't looked into much of like the exact details of Michael Way in terms of like if you Googled him or something. But on his student ID card, it said John J. Hall. Okay, so um, I'm assuming if it's a dorm, we can go up. There's going to be somebody at the door that we can ask. And... They might not let flash anybody a in at 11.30 at It night. is an Ivy League tier we university. Flash a badge. Somebody will be at the front desk. We flash a badge and we get in. Yeah. Bada boom. I, I, mean, I like it being first on site just to trash it, get rid of any inefficiencies. Yeah. I mean, we're just going through and, and erasing the number. or Because... Yeah, I mean the the other thing that we need to hurry for is the the police department, but I don't know what we could really do tonight. That's like another Litton job, I think. And I, since I've seen the number, I know what I'm looking for. I can go, and if somebody else wants to go with me, or every all of you know, all four of us, we can go. Yeah, I'll stay I, behind and set up the base. Sounds all good. right, I'm happy to go with you. We'll get some Same. coffee. I've been drinking my coffee from the the uh, cops and <laughs> maybe on the way up. And let's just do it. Now, the two of you that are about to embark on a two-hour drive, it's worth noting that one of you will be driving while the other of two two of you will be sitting in a, in a car twiddling your thumbs. This Thank is you. a great opportunity for random research you may think of or, you know, et cetera. But for now, if you embark on that drive, I'm going to focus on Litton and Brain Freeze as these two hours pass. Right. Are, are, we, oh. still in, or are we still all still in communication though? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you have phone. You the, have. Um, I'm just going to assume that, like, as experienced agents in your go bags, you all had burner phones right. and you've exchanged those numbers and, like, you. T I'm not going to make you guys literally speak. And the whale has jumped over the bridge right. but presumably you're texting in code to convey these ideas i don't want to hamper player to player conversation because i think player to player conversation is fun um but you guys do you 
So as it as it dawns on me, I'm just going to add, uh, type in questions. The question is going to be, why did he drive two hours to murder people? I mean, it's not got it's got to be much more directed than random, right? Well, it fits with the numbers. I mean, everything has a connection to the numbers, the sequence of numbers, the time, the the address. It all fits. Yeah. Okay. Number so of he, people. He researched the number and came up with yeah. that address in place. Okay. So, so I mean, we're we're expecting to find like a whiteboard where he's just drawing, you know, doing math for weeks, what, and then just he was able to deduce who his victims were going to be before his suicide. Because we I don't mean, know. I I think maybe the opposite. Maybe he just came up with that number. And then went looking for anyone who would fit the the numbers. So it was kind of a random thing. I think and he would have just... solved an equation. And this equation, he finds meaning in it. And that's driven him into Maybe. chaos. So I, I, but I don't know. The hey, you Grant, you feel a horrible him. pit of anxiety as you say that. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, the number's haunting me, and uh, so... Uh, can, can you describe that? What what effect is it really having on you? I don't know. I can't get it out of my mind. I'm thinking about it. It's running through and seeing the connection. Make, make a power roll, again. Agent Grant. <laughs> 39. It's a success. Okay. You... There's this moment where you experience an intrusive thought of the sequence of numbers. And if you, you, there's that second there where you blink, and if like if you had not held yourself together, you feel like you would have just blurted out the sequence. So, yeah, I mean, I've been infected. I'm treating this as a disease. I've been infected by it. It is altering me. I don't know how right now. And yeah. the best that we can keep this more contained and not have other people see it, the better. And I, well, yeah, go ahead, brain freeze. I'm thinking. I hate to be uh, morbid or suggest things that are immoral, but I mean, given the highly, apparently highly dangerous nature of this, maybe it would be good to do some um, human experimentation. Or maybe not. I, I, sounds dangerous. What do you have in might, mind? It might happen whether we want to do it or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that opportunity arises, it would be good to have a subject plug our ears. We don't hear anything. Just observe what happens with them. Although we would no, also have to no. not look at them. We're gonna go kidnap always... an algebra teacher from an no, elementary no. school. How yeah, about and they uh, could show like they could show the numbers like, on their hands. It's, <laughs> it's it's not our our job to do that sort right. of research. But I might suggest, for the sake of Agent Grant, that as you guys are driving for two hours, you guys just keep reciting random numbers, and maybe that will confuse Agent Grant's brain, and he won't be able to remember the original sequence anymore. Uh, I'm hoping. Put on. Them. Oh, go ahead. Go. I'll put on eight six seven five three zero nine. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna say five three zero nine. Play yeah, some right play, right. play music. Bam. Play uh, music. Anyone who's not driving, catch a nap. Yeah. And, well, uh, let's go. So, so hear me out. Here's here's where I'm thinking. Because, uh, yeah, like it's it's viral. That's how we have to think about it. So, a virus uses a host to reproduce, to do all sorts of things. But I mean, the thing that stands out the most to me is the suicide. This man was infected. He was compelled to go do what he did and he sprayed the number to spread it for it to reproduce. And then he killed himself. It already had control. Why didn't it hold on to that? Why self-destruct? It's a good question. Um, and maybe, maybe this, a... oh, go oh, ahead. sorry. Sorry. Maybe, maybe this number, like you said, is a virus. Maybe it's reprogramming. Maybe it's a programming code of some yeah. sorts. You know, you yeah. see it and it just sort of short circuits something in your head. I don't know. And it has a lifespan. 
yeah. the host has a lifespan. I mean, all this is bugging the hell out of me. But, you know, that's... Yeah. Just keep an eye on me. Well, don't try to figure it out. That's maybe a good idea. Yeah. Mm. I mean, <clears throat> from a psychological perspective, when you have someone who has an obsession, it, it clouds their thoughts and it's the free moments, the the sort of moments without action that cause them to focus more on their obsession. So I feel like as long as we're active, we should be resistant to this much more than Michael was because he was just fermenting in his own thoughts, whereas we are acting. Well, my... My suggestion was serious. When I was younger, I had a song stuck in my head. The farmer in the dell, the farmer in the dell, hi, ho, the Mario, the farmer in the dell, over and over and over again. And the only way I could ever get rid of it was to sing something else. And eventually I would even forget what the song was till just now. Fuck. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you guys just call off random numbers, then maybe he'll, it'll, you know, block it out in his head. I try to count and then somebody counts random numbers and you lose count. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Meg. Hey, Grant, what's your... Well, I don't want to ask too many personal questions. Um, Goat, make me an alertness roll uh, in this moment where you're looking over towards Grant. Grant, you've got your notepad out, right? Because you've been uh, scribbling I've stuff. I've been driving. Right. Well, I still want Goat to make this roll because he might see the notepad. I rolled an eight. An eight. That's good. So um, besides Grant, poke it out of his pocket. You see a little bit of his notepad. And right at the top of it, you see the sequence of numbers. Nine nine two zero dot two two nine nine eight nine two one two dot three three three. And there's that moment of anxiety, and you're like, "Oh shit!" And probably immediately avert your eyes, but you've seen it. Yeah. Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! Four nine six two yeah. one three one one four four one one <laughs> eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. 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 Anybody recite pi to the hundred millionth decimal? There you go. That's honestly hilarious that you guys are saying that. I'll talk about that more later. But anyways, um, as you guys are driving and Litton is scoping out the site. Close to just shy before 10, Litton. Um, you see Gant walk, actually, up to the Motel 6. He, he, he wasn't driving. He walked from the crime scene to here. Ooh. And he has that damned camera around his neck, clearly visible, as he goes into room two of the Motel 6. Okay. He goes in, the lights turn on. I want you, Litton, to make a ruck, blah, 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 make a luck roll. You want 50 or lower. Uh, <laughs> oh, one, which is just a oh, one. Yeah. No, it's not. And rules as written Delta Green, oh, one is always a critical success. Oh, okay. Just like 100 is always doubles. a critical. It is doubles. But it's also 01 and 100. So every time you roll, it's an 11% chance of a crit. It's just that nine out of those 11 crits are unknown whether they're critical successes or critical failures. Okay, so with that absolutely best critical success you could possibly ever roll, he goes in and like literally like 10 minutes later, he leaves, he walks. And from here, you can see like, uh, if you refer to my map, you can see that there's some streets not too far from the Motel 6 in this quote-unquote center of town. You see him walk into a McDonald's. Does he, he doesn't have, have the camera? camera. He, he did not have the camera on his neck. Okay. 
You also, with that O1, there is literally no one in the immediate area, and you don't see any security cameras. Okay. Um, is my guess that the other person, did I hear any hint that the other agent was in there? So that car, right? The Bu car that you saw okay. the African American man, Agent Kanor, get into and leave the crime scene on. You don't know what room he's in, but that car is parked in the immediate range of rooms one, two, and three. You saw Gant go into room two and leave. Rooms one and three, since you've been watching this, have both been completely dark. Okay, and I didn't. Hear you him not say seen... anything when he walked no, in the no. door? No, no. Nope, nothing like that. And this is factoring right. in your O1. All right. So... As you remember, Agent Kador was mentioning on the site that he had, was working. You know, he's been up since the early morning. He was in his later 40s. He's been working long hours. Deduction reasoning with the O1 factored in. Kador is probably asleep in either room one or three. And he turned out the lights when he left just now? Gant? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, then doing what I do best, uh, seeming rather nonchalant, there's nobody else around. It's what, now about 10-something at night? Um, It's probably more around 9.35 to 9.40, but the sun set in just before 7, like around like okay. 6.50 at this time of year around this part of the world. And the thing, Alliance is a small town. There's really not that not much that many, activity yeah. going on here. Right. I mean, as so, you can see on that map there, there's only a handful of streets. If I will walk up nonchalantly, I will pull out my lockpick and I will. All right. I, I, this is something worth warranting a roll because I would consider this a stressful situation. Okay. So you have a dex of 16, which translates to 80. 80 or lower, success. More than that, uh, you're going to have to spend time. I got 75, so. That's good. So you go up, you draw your tools. Within five seconds, you jimmy open the lock, and a dark hotel room is before you. Okay. You presumably slip in and immediately close the door behind you. Right. Slip in, close the door. Uh, make sure the the curtains are probably drawn. They usually they are. already are. This room yeah. is the curtains are drawn. There's no exterior views outside. It is entirely dark. And I'm sure that he has gone far enough to where he's not looking back. He's literally in the McDonald's already. You have okay. not seen him. I will go in. I will flip the lights on quickly and locate the camera. Okay. So as soon as you flip the lights on, you can see that the camera is laying on the nightstand mm -hmm. between the two beds in this room. So you immediately see it. I will go straight to the camera. I will open up the little door on it, and I will pull out the the card. Yep. And that goes just on. For, for the sake of things, because you have a good craft electronic score, you know that that's the only SIM card in the camera, right. and that by taking that out, it's right. losing pretty much all its data. There, 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 there's nothing better you can do. I'll take it out. I'll put it in my pocket. I will quickly wipe any fingerprints off of the camera and set it right back exactly where it was. Okay. Uh, go back, turn off the lights, walk out the door and close the door. I want you me. to give me a stealth roll at plus 20%. Stealth so you, you want 70 or lower? 70. Because your stealth score is 50 normally. And I got uh, 18. Okay, you're good. You get out there, uh, you're sliding out the door, you turn the lights off behind you, you go back, before you close the door, it's one of those locks where it's not a deadbolt, so you can lock it from the inside and then close it. Click. You go out there, turn around, there's no one in the immediate area. You book it, you book it, you book it, you get out of the parking lot, you play it cool, now you're just a guy walking on the street. Okay. Um, well, that took me all of 15 minutes. I'm going to call the guys. Hey, turn around, come back and get me. <laughs> uh, it's only not even, what, nine, it's about like 9.45 p.m. You guys left Alliance about 20 minutes ago. No, I, I say uh, I could catch a bus or something. Where, where are you guys going to stay? I could pick you up because I'm still here. Oh, you're still here? Yeah. Yeah. Right. He, um, Agent Brainfreeze wanted to try and uh, set up a base. 
Are we going to stay here then, almost, not somewhere? That, that, that's up to you guys. Um, all of you know that even with um, the camera SIM card taken, uh, there, are there are still the potential risk of the Alliance PD forensic files having photos of the sequence. Um, my, brain true, where are you? Brain freeze, where are you? My plan was to go, just go to Super Eight, book a room, and then I'll just I'll walk to Super Eight. Yeah, yeah. By the time you walk to Super Eight, I, I mean, unless you really want to role play going up and being like, blah 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 blah. I paid for these rooms, and right. by the time you have gotten there, Brain Freeze has securely set up. Um, rooms for you guys. Uh, I mean, each room does have two beds, so you could go as minimum of three, or you could just be uh, like, just like each have our own room and take five of the seats. Super Eight is much bigger than Motel Six. There's like twenty rooms in total, and only six of them are occupied, so there's no risk of I'm taking up too much space. Okay, that's up to you, Max, because you were the one that was there before anyone else, and you got um... to reserve the rooms. I'm going to get everybody in an individual room now that I know that it might be contagious. All right. Um, unless you have a problem with this, I'm just going to say that it's rooms 11 through 15 on the second floor. It's fine. Beautiful. Um, well, I'll show up. 11 to the 12, 13 to the 14 also have adjoining doors. So those rooms can just waltz into each other. I'll they? show up, what, 15 minutes later? Uh, yep uh 15 minutes later brain freeze you know you set up the stuff made some beds uh gotten out a duffel bag with illegal stuff set up in your individual room and you can see you probably see the text from agent linton first be like i'm on my way and then you out there and you see that clothed in black figure inching between street lights and heading to your in your direction now i'm just walking okay I'm fair enough to... <laughs> well, Brain uh, two of you rendezvous. Hello, Linton. Uh, should we take a look on that SD card before we nuke it to? No, let's just smash it. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because of the numbers. Yeah, no, you're yeah, right. we don't want to look at it. But I mean, either we got it or we didn't. But there was only one camera, and this is the only card. So this uh, little heist went very well for you, given your dice roll. That could have gone. So much worse. I'd have handled it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got a criminal in the group. Um, yeah, I mean, you just take it out. It doesn't really matter what you smash it with because you could literally just throw it on the ground and just stomp on it. But, I mean, that SD card is gone. I don't know. Sometimes, you know, those, those whiz bangs can get a broken thing and get all the data off of it. So I'm going to... I'm going to put it in the ashtray and burn it, light it on fire. Okay, yeah. As well. You take those shattered pieces, you go, no, that smells really fucking bad. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever burned plastic. Plastic. Yeah. It does not smell good. And actually, are you burning this in the room? Yeah, just in the ashtray. It's just right. the old thing, isn't it? So, I mean, yeah, but these are like plastic and metal parts that so they're going to smoke a little bit, right? Yeah. Give me uh, one at Brain Freezer, Litton. Give me a luck roll. I'll do it. Uh, ooh, 86. <laughs> yeah, so you get on a lighter and you light that, and there's a little spark um, and a little bit more smoke than you were hoping for, and there's a point where the smoke alarm is like, beep, 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 uh -oh. beep, 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 beep. Just take the fucking batteries out of that thing. Okay, uh, if you want to go no, for just, taking the batteries just, out of it. No, do this, because we don't want to get in trouble. Beep, if they come and beep, ask, beep, I'll just say, I beep, don't know we can smoke. I want, once again, one of the two of you to give me a luck roll. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, 44. That's excellent. Critical success. That's good. Because there is a, this moment of panic where you're like, shit, 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 the, 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 the people are going to come, and then there's like, but you very quickly went up and you take the batteries out and it just shuts up. You wait. And there's these moments of anxiety because yes. you're just like any Open fucking moment. But over the course of the next 10 minutes, a buddy shows up. I'd have just pretended like I was smoking. And yep. They get and mad it at me. It seems like whoever is managing <laughs> this hotel 
did not pick up on that because of your critical success. Smoking in bed is a fire hazard. But you I have know. destroyed that SIM card and then some. So, so if we're uh, just sitting there waiting for to hear from the others, so. yeah, it's going to be until about eleven twenty p.m. until they actually arrive at Columbia University. And right now, in Brain Freezes and Litton's time light, it's like ten oh five, if even. We'll just we'll just shoot the shit. Maybe I'll tell him some. Go to the real to the nearby, and fake stories of my exploits and uh, go to the nearby gas station and buy a six pack of Modelo. Uh, Not Modelo, no. no. Yeah, what? <laughs> no. Well, you know, I mean, I'm just giving Stella uh, Artois. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's probably some place in Alliance you get Stella Artois. But... I don't know. Is it is it a dry? I don't know if they're dry. No, it's not dry. Though one thing you would note about Alliance and that your time here is that the town is quite spread out and that there is this strip you guys are in. But when you parse through the farmlands to the south, there is actually another cluster of, you know, um, I'll, I'll order a pizza. Buildings. And there's uh, also a Jewish synagogue in that Alliance is apparently a primarily Ooh. Jewish town. Um, if you look I'll, at it historically, it was like a place that was uh, like Jew I'll, migrants. I'll maybe. order some knishes and... Uh... Some white fish. <laughs> Beautiful, because we've got knishes on delivery. That that's how synagogues work, right? Excellent. Anyways, yeah. um, I will psychoanalyze Lytton. Well, do you want? Do you, do you, I mean, you are spending. I mean, you're spending a long amount of time talking to him and assessing his personality. So, I mean, you have an eighty percent, but just because it's fun, I think when assessing another player, it's better to have you roll. Okay. Uh, Lytton, do you have human intelligence? Do I? Um, let's see. You have at least I do. 10%. I have 40. Uh, I have 40. Okay, roll that to be a contest against Brain Freeze. Uh, -oh. uh 38. Unle unless you, you're you fine with him. I'm, I don't mind. He's just going to find out that I'm pretty damn confident and that I'm addicted to adrenaline. What, what'd you roll, Brain Freeze? 15, so not as good. In no, terms of better, contested roles, technically, I mean, you still succeeded, even though if it was a contest, Lytton would win. He doesn't want to resist. So I'd say that you just get the information he told you. This man is a risk taker, a criminal. He's lived on the edge. He loves adrenaline. But he's not hiding anything from you. Excellent. And there are no long-term exhibitions of mental illness or extreme instability outside of just, you know, being a the, the, the stress of a Delta Green agent. He's not any more fucked up than the average person. Yeah, and he's he's no more worse than you. Maybe a little less. Oh, well. I, I'm pretty uh, bad. I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe a little less, but it's not to the extreme. If you get what I'm saying. I, I, I don't, I don't want to hurt anybody, but there are some people who have a lot, and I take a little of their a lot, and then I enjoy it. Definitely would be able to assess that this <laughs> is a man that understands his antiques. Yeah. Anyways, unless Brain Freeze and Linton have anything really specific we want to do. Speaking of which, I will turn on the TV and watch uh, Antiques Roadshow. Okay. Um, there's <laughs> nothing really out of the norm coming off on PBS's Antiques Roadshow tonight. So I'm just going to move ahead. Um, Goat, Grant, and Monocle. So you are heading to NYC proper. Um, I would assume that on your drive, just because of my experience in uh, navigating to places I've never been before, that you probably put uh, John J. Hall on Google Maps. Um, you can see on that picture that John J. Hall is in the southeastern extremity of the university campus. You are driving, and it is nightfall, and it's not the most fun drive, but there's nothing really horrible about it other than traffic. But 
Officially titled as Columbia University in the city of New York, Columbia is an Ivy League research university and the oldest institution of higher education in New York. Um, of the three of you uh, heading in, are any of you native to New York? I know Phil. Is, I know uh, Goat and Grant are not. No. No. Okay. Um, the main campus is located in the neighborhood of Morningside Heights in Manhattan's Upper West Side, just a bit west of Harlem. Uh, spanning six city blocks, the university owns over 7,800 apartments in Morningside Heights, housing faculty, graduate students, and staff. Almost two dozen undergrad dormitories, purpose-built or converted, are located on campus or in Morningside Heights. Columbia University, this is something that's really interesting for you, Goat, because I, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory that on this drive you'd be looking up Columbia University just on Wikipedia and other internet research source, uh, sources that Columbia actually has an extensive tunnel system underneath them that is more than a century old with the oldest portions predating the present campus. That's a real fact. Some of these remain accessible to the public while others have been cordoned off. Nice. And at approaching 11.20 to 11.30 p.m., you get a good view of John Jay Hall. It's a particularly imposing building. The tallest parts of it go up to 12 stories. Um, and subsequent buildings, like the one on the left over here, goes up to about nine. The one on the far right here goes up to about four. Y'all arrive. The three of you, um, there's, I mean, city parking, you've got to get a parking meter somewhere. But once you've done, you've parked the view car, it, the ball is in the three of you's court as to what you are actually doing. The first thing I want to do is, as Grant is getting out of the car, I want to grab that notepad, tear the page <laughs> out, and eat it. The one that has a number <laughs> on it. You to go and eat it. I'm just, just going to eat it. <laughs> that is a pass. You feel fine? You've destroyed a part of the sequence. That's good, right? Didn't even realize I was writing it down. Yeah, I I, I saw the I saw the damn number. I saw it. I, I saw it. And I just had to get rid of it. And it made you want to eat it? <laughs> I, I didn't want to eat it. You know these artist types. Well, then why did you? <laughs> There's no other way to incinerate it other than by my person. It was oh, a bad God. idea, but it was it was spontaneous. It was spontaneous. It's gone. Oh. It's gone. Um, That's the important part. It's gone. Yeah. Well, and good work, Agent. Um, we're going to be happy about that. I'll put in for hazard pay. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's... Um, yeah, well, there's got to be like a resident or something like a school employee right go bang on the door i'm sure the dorm's locked oh i mean so here's one thing you're realizing as you approach john j hall is that it is not just a dorm and that it is both has dormitories and is an otherwise like research institution there's i mean it's huh. it's 12 floors there is a lot going on here so when you get to the door it, it's not that the door is locked it's that you go through the door you enter a library and you enter this immediate, you know, like check-in office area. Um, there is a somewhat pudgy security guard behind the common area desk. He's fairly burly, but at a little bit above average size. And as the three of you come in, he is immediately perking up and just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I don't think I've ever seen you all before. What do you want? Who wants to take this one? Anyone? I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll walk up and I'll be like, um, good evening, sir. Um, my name is Agent Goat um, and these are my associates. Um, we are with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And we are here badge. on official okay. business. Um, I'd like to see your badges. Yes, sir. Here you go. Okay. He, you, you flash your badges towards me. He's like, okay. Um, I need to. 
I, I need to make a phone call. Uh, this is protocol. Uh, if this is a criminal investigation, I have to let the university know. Just give me a minute, and we can get all of this sorted out. And That's fine. Um, he gets out a cell phone, and within the next minute, he's calling. He's just like, yeah, yeah, we've got some people here. Yep. Uh, they say they're FBI. Some kind of investigation here. Uh, they went inside. There's something they got to get take care of. Okay, I'll tell them. Um, and he's like, "Listen, you know, this isn't anything personal. It's part of my contract, but I can't let you in until a proper university official is here to be able to be give you a proper escort." Uh, since this. It's this late. It's going to be another um, 30, 45 minutes or so from what I was told. But um, until she gets here, I can't let you in. That's just um, how my job is. If I let you in, I'm going to get fired. No, no, no. I understand. I understand. We're not here to get anybody fired. That's not That's not our role. Um, I just would like to let you know that this is an active murder investigation. Um Seven Active people. Murder investigation. What's happened? Seven people have been murdered, and uh, we have traced the suspect to this building. Jesus Christ! Seven. People. So, do you feel that you may be able to get your person on the phone and encourage them to get here a little bit sooner? All right. All right. Uh, let me. Let me. Let me make a phone call. Um. And. No, I don't think that's a roll. I think that's, you know, if that's any kind of roll, that's a luck roll. Give me a luck roll, goat. 53. Okay, he's calling up at the phone, and he's calling, like, oh, the, 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 these guys, you know, it, it's apparently a serious federal investigation. Multiple people have died. I really need people to go in here. And he's just like, uh, you know, she's hustling, but at best, that's shaving off five minutes. Well, the 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 efforts appreciated. The efforts appreciated. I, I appreciate it as well. And as the three of you wait in this dreary lobby with a Keurig nearby and really nothing else but Columbia brochures to keep you occupied, I'm going to take a quick, uh, like three to five minute bio break. Probably not even any of that, but we're going to do that, get that knocked out, and then come back. Five minutes later. So our agents are lingering in the lobby and waiting 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 it gets to be a just a few minutes before midnight um until a woman bursts into the lobby of John J Hall she is a fairly attractive woman in her mid 40s, curly brown hair. Uh, coming in, she's immediately giving the vibe of administrator. Uh, her beaming magnetic smile can't help but draw attention to her. And despite it being late at night, she looks a little bit harried and disheveled, like she could have spent some more time applying makeup, getting herself dressed, but she still looks good despite that. And she's just like, hello. Uh, I'm Sandy Bima, and welcome to Columbia University. I'll be happy to help with whatever the FBI needs. And she sticks her hand out towards Agent Monocle, um, seemingly expecting a handshake. And you are? Yes, uh, Agent Smith. Uh, very nice to meet you. Um, we believe that one of the students here has some confidential information that needs to be taken. Uh, indeed. So, okay. It, it, it's the university's top priority to cooperate with law enforcement however we can. I, I just need to understand what is going on here. And with that in mind, I can help you with what you need. And I will do everything in my power to get it for you. Can, 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 I, can I just see your badges, please? Well, we can show your badges. Yes, of course. By all You've means, got a I, shit, I, you got a you shit buck coming here, um, really quickly, and we're gonna have you're gonna have media, you're gonna have more officers, 
they're going to descend on this place. They're right. They're prior behind us. Um, we what's, need to what's going into, on. What's going on here? Calm down. Listen, we need to get into these rooms. We need unfeathered access. We need it now. We need it quickly. We don't need a lot of questions because I want to get in this. We want to do our our initial assessment before this shitstorm happens. Roll persuasion. And believe me, it's coming. You're providing a really good excuse, so I'm willing to give you a plus twenty percent bonus. Well, I got a thirty one. So okay. My... So you provide that, and she's just like, okay, okay. Um, I once again, I'm willing to cooperate. I'm willing to do these things. My question to you is just, what's going on here? How does this involve? Columbia? Let's let's walk let's... and talk. <clears throat> Yeah, okay, yeah. walk and talk it. We yes, will do that. Uh, we can uh, my... just get past officer. Uh, what's his name here? And she holds out a badge, scans through the door, um, and you guys are into the depths of John J. Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sandy. I'll I'll stay with you. I'll I'll answer what I can. A lot of it is classified. I hope you understand. And my two fellow agents will be the ones to go and find the materials. We need to know um, where Michael Way is, is his dorm, his lab, and we need it now. Um, Tom, her addressing her your message, you have shown <laughs> I her just gave badges. It to her. Michael, those, Michael those Way badges have their cover names. Uh, no, 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 no. They haven't said anything to of her the about who they're looking for. I, yeah, I just did. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, no, no, yeah. I just did. Um, <laughs> and in regarding Michael Way. Uh, yes, you just. Uh, uh, we need hey. his door and we need his lab. What, what happened? What happened to Way? He won't be coming back. The yeah, we're, what? We're not able to give you many details about it, other than he is a suspect in this crime, and we believe he has evidence. Michael Way is a suspect in this crime. I mean that. Yes, ma'am. That's. Cr- and you know, once again, this is walking while talking, and she's just talking about let like, way. You know, I as someone affiliated with the uh, PR branch of Columbia University, I make great efforts to individually know my students. Um, Wonderful way he was a great student with Mono Grade as a grad student. He he completed his bachelor's in applied mathematics and continued that field through grad school. I mean, he he would have had his master's by the end of next spring. And he's involved with all this. Of all the students I've ever had, he seems like the least likely to. It It is a very strange case. We We don't really fully understand his connection. And that's what we're hoping to learn from investigating his his dorm. Okay, okay. Uh, but once again, let me emphasize that, please, if there's anything you need, I am here to help you. Yeah, and we appreciate your cooperation and assistance. This is most helpful. We'll make sure to note down your I, cooperation. By all means. But I, I mean, I, I understand it's a classified case, but I can't help you but be curious. What? How is he involved in this? What What? What? What did he Unless do? You know, did something happen well, to him? It, it's... Yeah, the, the less you know, the, the better it is. I'm gonna roll. We're not at liberty to be able to tell you this right now. Just show uh, us. Go and, and Grant. I give you a choice between the two of you uh, as to who wants to roll persuade. I think you both have forties, so I don't think it really matters. I just did the last one. So. I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. That is. Um, I actually have 50 in Persuade. It's a 47. That's good. I rolled an 88, so uh, which is a failure. So, <laughs> um, yeah, as you're speaking, there is no indication. Like, she is buying all of what you're saying. And it's very yeah. clear that her number one priority uh, with this crit fail I just rolled uh, yeah. that is making the university look good. That That is her number one thing she is looking out for. Yeah, the one thing I do want to know, know is you 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 said you know Michael really well. I, I um, know him as well as I can make the effort into. I have a yeah. lot of students to manage, but I have spoken with Michael on multiple occasions, and I am very familiar with him. Could, That's good. Could you have provide you... us a list of uh, people he's been working with recently? 
I can work on that. But to be honest, um, Michael has never been really the most um, social person. You know, he's been held in high esteem by all his program, you know, as a hard worker, happy and no nonsense, bent on making math his life. Um, many passing acquaintances, but few close friends, at, at least from what I could tell. Right, um, so no, no group collaborations. He he does associate frequently with some fellow students by the name of um, Anthony Desjardins and Molly Frank. Uh, but when it comes to close friends, that's all I can immediately think of. Are those two individuals, do they live in this building? Oh, yes. Yes. Hey, good. Good. I, do you know if Michael was exhibiting any behavioral changes uh, in the last few weeks? No. Okay. Not that I was aware of. Okay. We're just, just asking questions, you know, we're trying to piece it all together, right? Um, did, did Michael have a roommate? No, he lives in a single dorm by himself. Okay, okay, okay. Um, our dorms for graduate students here on the floor that um, Michael was staying on is entirely dedicated to single rooms. Okay, okay. Do we reach his dorm? From <laughs> I mean, dorm? you know, college students, right? Every now and then they like to uh, get a little frisky with each other, but at least what's on the official roster is one person to a room on his particular <laughs> floor. I, I was referring to an, an official roommate, yeah. not an unofficial night visitor. She uh, she gives a mischievous grin. In a in a good way. I'm not saying yeah. that in a sinister way. I know that uh, things seeming suspicious or sinister in Delta Green can easily do blab, blab, blab. Okay, have we reached her room, uh, the room yet? Yeah, um, by now uh, you have passed through the... Um, so as she's escorting you um, through John J. Hall, she gets up eventually to the third floor, which contains the Fu Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Science. Going through hallways and various sets of stairs, you eventually get to the fifth floor, and see signs leading you in the direction of the department. Arriving and going inside, um, she walks you in through and past a bit of a laboratory area for mathematics students, and then goes up another set of stairs into the dorms where Wei was staying in. Uh, you head towards the dorm and it's really pretty much just you get to a point in the hallway on the fifth floor and before you is a room that she escorts you to number 333. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Monica, you've got our escort here. Um, I'm yes. going to put gloves on. We're going to and uh yeah if she'd let us in please oh yeah she's completely willing to let you in and as she is getting out the key and lock it she's just like um i i, I don't really I, I must admit i'm not super experienced with federal agents Do you, you just want... need to stay out here just yes okay. uh sandy stay yeah. out here with me uh um, avert please, your eyes when the you door want opens. me to go get molly and frank um if no you question not them. yet not yet okay um i'll just stand right here and wait yeah um if you don't mind um yeah i i have a notepad here i would like to start on a character profile of michael uh so please just everything that right you know i mean about him. if you want a character profile uh, i mean i've got a bit of insight i mean i'm a, i'm not a mathematician but i've got a decent grip on what um what he was working on oh please Okay, so as presumably Goat and Grant go into the room, uh, Bima is talking with Monocle, and she is just talking about is that, you know, he 
he's been involving on this work. It involved really big numbers and like a computer algorithm. I'm not, I'm not an expert on math, but it's his schoolwork and dissertation involved research into something called uh, Mersenne primes. It's hmm. uh, like a, a, a French word. Okay. It, it essentially gets to numbers that have like so many digits to them and to the like nth powers to the point where they like have literally millions of digits um they from what i remember they can't really be like calculated by the human mind right they're they're just so advanced that they need to calculate them using algorithms and databases and the like and uh, apparently there's money too. Like if you discover a Mersenne prime, you'll cash out. Uh, there was some guy that the, there's, there's only so many of these numbers as well. I think there's only like 48 or 50 of them known. Some guy named Curtis Cooper realized the most re recent one uh, a couple years back. And uh, as she's saying this, um, Grant and Go, you go into the room. Uh, the door creaks, and before you is this small, modest, and honestly quite messy dorm room. Uh, quite clear that Michael Way had very little or no social life, or at the very least had no interest in having people over, because every surface is covered in books open to random pages, his bed is nothing more than a futon dropped in the middle of the 12 by 19 foot dorm room, which is the average size of a single room college dorm in the United States. Uh, a single rickety Ikea desk holds a nondescript gray computer and a cheap monitor. A pile of papers are stacked all over the table and most are covered in a tiny thick mathematical scrawl. Um, and that Agent Grant is someone that has taken extensive courses in chemistry. You have the base mathematics enough to know that the mathematical scrawl on those papers are differential equations. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just going to go through, um, do a quick search. Okay. Um, grab anything. Now, that... oh, I want to play a fun little game with you two, Goat and Grant, and that... As this room is before you and, you know, there's books literally covering the room in random places, uh, the bed and the desk, where specifically are you searching? I will give each of you two tries to name this without calling for a search roll. Go, you're first. So you want me to name? Just something. name, like as you enter the room, where are the places you're searching? Oh, Okay. Um, so basically there's just this desk and a bed and a there's desk, no other bed, furniture, books, books all over the place. There's probably like a dresser with clothes yeah, or a little like closet, probably like a little, little closet, but like it's Spartan outside of the books. Yeah. I'm going to, if there's a, <laughs> if there's a, a dresser, uh, I'll kind of kind of rummage through that and see if there's anything of, of interest. You rummage through the dresser. It's mostly just clothes, random academic books. There's nothing that's immediately striking your interest. You have another try. Okay. Um, might as well also kind of... God, look at all these books, Grant. A lot of them which... concern... A lot of mathematical theory, you know, like high-level calculus and beyond. Some of them resolve history. Uh, specifically, you have a history score, right? 40%. I do. Yeah. Some of these books randomly involve Dutch history. But outside of that, now, if Agent Grant doesn't nail it within these two tries, I'm just going to ask you two to roll search. But I want to see if Grant can nail this opportunity. Well, I mean, I was just going to the desk for the computer and uh, the files. Okay. So you go towards the computer. 
the computer you look boot it up and the first thing you realize is that it's not password protected and that you can just open it and it's just like well now i'm in i've got access to his university email word documents anything he may have left open etc yeah take a quick look but i'm planning on just taking the whole um desktop But okay, so you're looking a quick look. Uh, I just out of curiosity, what are these first few things you're looking at? Oh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Everything froze up for a second. My bad. Um, my question is, is that with the computer booted up, what are on its file directory or its emails or whatever? What are the first things you're looking at? Well, I'd be kind of checking the last um, round of emails to see if there's anything that he sent to someone um, that may lead us to, you know, if he's got the uh, number out there. And then it should be, I mean, if he's doing calculations, it, if he doesn't have some kind of, uh, I, I know it's simple, but like a calculator or something out. or Oh, there's something. definitely a calculator out. <laughs> 100%. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't even put this number on a calculator, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not a computer person. I well, it's fine, but I am checking his person emails because, like I said, it's not password protected. You just literally right wiggle the mouse and it turns on, and you're in the the, the main file directory, and he's via his cookies. He's his email is already signed in. Uh, it's not a hard process to open. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for all where he would get the um, the password out or the the number out. So yep. what sites he was looking at, and then of course um, what emails he sent out. So if the sites are already up that he's he's on the mm -hmm. web, um, and any chats, anything like that. Um, Early in the morning, at like three thirty three a.m. You see that Michael Way, the, his email address, forwarded an email to 12 other addresses, all port of mathgeeks at listbrain.com. This email he sent is extremely concerning because it contains a complete step by step mathematical proof of the solution to what he is calling the laqueous puzzle and outlined in the doc in the email is a the final answer is a 16 digit sequence is a 16 digit sequence and this email of these 12 other people he sent it out to uh tentatively consists of mathematics enthusiasts uh professional not from around the world who are just like interested in math puzzles so realizing that he sent a mathematical proof of this sequence provokes a sand roll from helplessness. Oh wow! I, it's a twenty-nine. Okay, you're good. You lose nothing. You, I just can't. That I look up to go. Bad. Though. That's really bad. Yeah, I look up to go cool. and said it's out. Oh, um, um, and just said I would like one of you to read out. Uh, probably Grant, just because it's fitting. Sorry if I'm singling you out, but um, that is the list of uh, the people it has been sent out to. Though not on that list is a fellow named Julio uh, Kimbrough, PhD, a professor of mathematics at Alfred University in upstate New York. Um, yeah, I guess I can. Um, it's Lawrence Baddock, 42, a math chess enthusiast, um, Weiss Baden, Germany, um, Kelly Castleman, uh, 29, a math teacher at high school in Brinkman, Montana. Um, Jamie Izzy, 19, a biochemist a student in Paris. Um, Noreen Cooter, 22, math student in the uh, Manila. Manila, Manila ah, it's Italy. just Manila. Manila, geez. I, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Tia Markel, um, 29 in math, dabbler in New York City. Eva Mahaffery, uh, Mahaffer, uh, 
uh, PhD, 39, physician in the Brighton, England, Ben Philbeck, 44, computer scientist in Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, California, um, Kelly Pelter, uh, Pelcher, uh, 21, a physics student at University of Columbia, Missouri, um, Julius Sward, 31, a house husband in Modesto, California, Emily Tomlinson, um, 51, a chemist at Tyson Foods in Miami, Florida. So... And you going through this, of anyone else, you are grasping the gravity of the sequence, and you are just like, despite the success in the sand roll, just like, oh, shit. So, Grant, this is a dumb suggestion, but try to do a recall on that message. It, it might not Recalling work. emails is actually, uh, it, it's interesting, because if you recall a message, how that works is that people that have not opened the message, then it gets deleted from their files and they never received it. However, if they already opened the message, it doesn't get properly recalled. And if you recall it, there is no way for you as a user to know who has opened it already. So yes, you can okay. recall it, but you have no idea who's already opened it. It's worth a shot. Indeed. Better than nothing. So, yeah, I'll do that. And then, um, again, it, this looks like it's and out. Go, with you grasping the gravity of the situation, you also need to make the sand roll. That is a failure. 1d4 from helplessness. Unless that hits your breaking point, that is another check mark for helplessness. And hey, that was four. Ooh, do you want to project that? I think I, I think I will. I think I will. Are you um, taking it out in a close relationship to you? Yeah, I'm gonna take it out on my my best friend Dave. All right, roll that yeah. D4, bro. Okay. One. All right, you only lose three sand. And a little bit of your projection towards your best friend. You know, how we're going to word that is that you think back on it. You remember that there's a point where you're hanging out with him. You're doing some urban exploration stuff. You parked in a parking garage. His license plate was a part of the sequence. Crazy. Nine eight nine two one two dot three, and that realization is just like, uh. Um, if there's nothing else that's obvious on the computer, I'm going to start. Uh, there is a while you're searching it. There is another interesting thing. Um, there is a, well. Uh, before I address that, because you're still searching the computer and combing the files to look for stuff, I want to ask Agent Goat, are you continuing your search, your, your search of the room? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, kind see of... If, see if you can quickly find this thing. Give me a search roll while okay. Grant is looking on the computer. Let's see, search. This is no. all about time more than whether you find it or not, but... No, I rolled an 85. Nope. Okay, so you're continuing to comb the room. You're looking through these books. Surely one of these pages has a solution somewhere. But meanwhile, Agent Grant, you're looking on the computer. And it's a bit puzzling. You know, you've recalled that email from mathgeeks at listbrain.com. But you're probing the computer and there is this point looking through it where you see there's this thing, there's a PDF of a book titled Libre Flores Admiratio. Um, you don't, you don't have any, any Latin or anything, do you? No. No. So, at least by you just immediately seeing the PDF titled Libra Pluris Admiratio, you have no idea what that means.
Um, yeah, I. Is there any Latin books over there, Goat? Um, you haven't seen any Latin no. books yet, Goat. No, but I got Google. Yeah, we can look this up. Yep, uh, Google Translate says that the Libri Pluris Admiratio translates to the Book of Many Wonders. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think we're going to take the time to start translating this here, but... Like yeah, I said, we can disconnecting. Well, another thing you will notice by just looking at the PDF is that the title is still citing that Latin, but the book itself is actually an English translation. At least that PDF you found is. Well, I don't want to stay in here long enough to read a book. Um, we can always hook this computer back up, but I'm going to start disconnecting it. And okay, just you're starting to disconnecting this. the power cables. Yeah. Um, do you have a duffel bag or I, I mean, neither of us explicitly stated it. So, I mean, it's not impossible that way would have had one already in his room, but just, I feel like it's fitting to call for a luck roll from you, Grant, to see like as a Delta green agent, you brought like a bag of something of this to be like preparing in advance. Uh, no, um, that is a, a 29. I am okay. So, you did in fact think ahead and you were like, There might be compromising materials. I should show up with some evidence bags or a duffel bag or something to make this look convincing. And you have a means to store this tower. So, yeah, um, Store it, uh, put it in the bag. Um, anything else on the desk? Open in drawers. So open, uh, on the on the desk is those series of uh, of papers lying out that had differential equations that you recognize as differential equations, Agent Grant, because you have a really good chemistry score, and a good chemistry score, me chemistry score means you understand what a differential equation is. They'll go in the the duffel bag as well. Then anything that looks up. Uh, Anything okay. that looks like he has some numbers that he's been doing. So stuff. you put the computer in there. You put the papers in there. While you're packing this stuff up, this is right at the point where Goat is just like, darn, I, I, I'm searching this room, searching these books. I'm not finding anything. Yeah, in my frustration, I'll just pick up a few of these uh, these books on Dutch history, and I'll kind of dog ear the pages that they're open to. Now, if you all thoroughly want to do another comb over the room, I am willing. If you if you're willing to invest the time to comb over the room to allow both of you to try to roll again. Yeah, I mean, I was going to hit the bed, um, look through the bed. Oh, you're going to hit. You're going to hit yeah, the bed. Did he? Huh? Did he have a? Uh, book under the pillow, you know, he's sleeping with... Oh, you, 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 you say that, book under the pillow, and that's uh, that's the magic marker, right? Because you look under the futon, and you find something shoved beneath the futon and the bed frame itself. A bundle of, like, photocopied pages held together by an orange binder clip stained with, like, coffee and, like, random food stains... Um, you, uh, after spending some time browsing the computer, you can immediately tell that this is an annotated, photocopied English translation of the Book of Many Wonders. And it seems to be translated by a fellow named Maurice Esther and published in 1944. And are you are you just looking at that and being like, oh shit, and throwing it into your bag, or are you flipping through it? Yeah, I mean, I I'm not sure how long this has taken us, and I don't want to keep Monaco you, out there. The I'm not for, gonna necessarily you know. put the fire under your ass and saying you have X amount of time. Like, if you want to take your time, I'm not gonna shit on you. No, I don't want to. I I really don't want to be in here as that long. We wanted okay. to clean up the place as best we can. Any incriminating evidence right. that might lead so to the you number. Shove, you you shove that it. book in your bag. You see yeah, Libri Pluris Admiratio, and you're just like, nope, I, I saw them in the computer. That looks suspicious. Let's just throw that in the duffel bag. 
Yeah. And if there's anything else that he's like notebook that he's been working on. Um, you you've it's... already you've got the computer, you've got the papers, um, and you have that little photocopied book. And even if you guys spend another like five to ten minutes like trying to thoroughly comb this room, there's not not much more to it, and you feel confident that you have looked through here. But what you don't feel confident about is all of those uh, mathematicians that were emailed a mathematical proof that gave them an answer for this apparent quote unquote laqueous solution or laqueous that, equation. That that'll had be something for the hand. An answer of uh, that digit that the two of you have seen. That'll be something for the handler. We'll talk to him tonight. Um, but yeah, we're, we'll leave. Go. This is it. Um, I'm good. I'm check good. Check out Monocle and, and uh, does he, uh, you know, when we're out there with, uh, what is it, Sandy? Is yep. Uh, what you got there. Sandy Bima is literally hovering on you as soon as going. Is it like, hello? Um, does he have a lab? For you? Does, does he, he have someplace? Your... Uh, yes. I'm Wade not listening was, to her. Just... Um, working in a lab just downstairs. If we walk through it, I can show you to his workstation if you want. Please. By all means. Um, is there anything more I can do for you in this immediate area? No, just lock it up and, um, you know, there'll be others coming. So, yeah, okay. expect it to be a crime scene. Keep it locked. Okay. And she closed the door. She locks it. Um, for the sake of redlining, she shows you to his uh, mathematical station in the lab. There is a computer. There are some notes there. But as you look through it, there are not, uh, there, there's not anything of immediate note that strikes out to you. But in the process, she talks a lot about more about um, Michael Way's schoolwork as she has been conferring with some of his superiors and colleagues while you guys are searching the room. Is that, um, well, why? Uh, I asked some fellow faculty and students about more about Way's schoolwork. Uh, his dissertation involved research into Mersenne prime numbers. A Mersenne prime is a prime number that is one less than a power of two. So you take a prime number, you double it, and then subtract one. If that result is also a prime, that makes it a Mersenne prime. A majority of them have digits in the thousands, even millions. There, there's only 48 known Mersennes, and scientists across the world search for more every day. Um, the most recently discovered Mersenne Prime has over 17 million digits and was found by a private researcher named Curtis Cooper in January 2013 as part of GIMP's, <laughs> you know, the great internet Mersenne Prime search. Um, Michael Way's thesis, he was trying to discover a Mersenne Prime with a computer algorithm, but um, he was having some trouble. Understandable. Um, in my time interrogating some of peers, apparently he got an inspiration from a Dutch philosopher or something, but uh, I'm not a historian. I don't know anything about that. Interesting. He wasn't working with any students closely on this, was he? Well, his any closest professors? friends have always been, uh, I mean, I can't immediately think of a professor, but he was close friends with um, Molly Frank and Anthony Desjardins. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at monocle and goat. Yeah. Any wanna... anything of note in his personal life? Would he go visit family on holidays? Uh, his family was out in California, so in extreme holidays, yes. But for the most part, I mean, he made uh, he made math his life and was very passionate about his work. You know, a workaholic devoted to his studies. He took his loans very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly stayed on campus. Understood. Um, so what do you guys think about uh, meeting up with Molly and Anthony? Yeah, it might be worth staying the night in town so that we could question them in the morning. Yeah, I mean, I admittedly, by now, factoring in this whole meeting and alliance and stuff, if you wanted to drive back, it'd be like 3 a.m. at best. I like the idea of staying now. Probably. One thing to note, because you three are the public investigators, Agent Knorr did say last night that he wanted to meet with you guys again 
at 8 a.m. tomorrow at the Alliance Police Department to discuss the upcoming press conference. That's and you right. two left the two that are not on the case behind an alliance. That is something to consider. Well, I'm... I am on the case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. I'm getting I'm getting my uh, bits of uh, I'm actually getting slightly confused. That's my bad. Monocle is not in the case, but brain freezes. That's my bad. Thank you, Max. Yes. Um, well, I'd like to um, I think we're done here for the night. Um, it's been a long night for us all. Um, thank you for your help. Um, we'll by all means, touch uh, here. please. Uh, sure. and she she hands. Uh, I feel, I want to say that Grant is the one that's holding themselves most official. If Monocle and Goat want to debate that, feel free. But as a result, she hands Grant a business card to be like uh to be able to contact her, and you see that she is a high ranking public relations official with Columbia University. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you. And if anything else, go Monaco. We will... Please, if there's anything uh, I can do to help you, just let me know. And yeah, with that, just uh, I say we leave. <laughs> OK, I, I mean, nothing's going to disturb you on your way out. I mean, we're getting on to the better part of like, uh, you know, 1 15 a.m. I like Monocle's idea of getting a yeah. you know, get a hotel locally, and there are a million hotels in Manhattan. I could sit here all day to list them if I really yeah. wanted to, but I feel like that's just not productive. Yeah, well, there's <laughs> there's going to be questions about you guys missing, but um, yeah, you think Brain Freeze can handle it in the morning? Brain Freeze can handle it. We got called sure. away. Brain yeah. Freeze can handle it. We got called away. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, for all we know, Anthony and Molly might have the same virus and they're about to go kill someone. So I think it's important that we, I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't want to drag him out of bed. I'm kind of beat, but we definitely need to talk to him. Yeah, I'm I'm exhausted. This has been a long. You, uh, I, I posted that map of the immediate area around Columbia University and John Jay Hall for uh, fictional reasons. We're just going to say that there's a hotel. If you look on the far right of side of that map where it says like West 117th Street, just east of Morningside Park, we'll say there's a hotel on that block. I'm going to text. Uh, well, once we get it into the hotel, I will, you know, obviously text uh, Litton and Brain Freeze and uh, and also call the handler and say we, we've got a problem. OK, so you, Agent Grant. Um, it was never established before, but I think for narrative reasons, we'll just say that you were the one that had the burner phone that had the handler's number. Um, and you, you call him. But it but it but it it gets to the fourth ring before he is, uh, he picks up and he's just like, uh, yeah, what's, well, what's up? I'm assume goat and monocles there in the room um we have a problem that we we've gotten to ways dorm room we've opened his computer he has sent i believe he has sent this this number out to what was that 12 in a, a number of individuals 12 individuals across the world across the world we've got you know i recalled the the email but i have no clue whether or not these people have already opened it. Um, Jesus Christ. We okay. The computer. I have the computer. We have the files. But... Uh, okay. Uh, shit. That is bad. Uh, really bad. Code red. Um, but sh I've got, I've got other people I can call up. I'm going to work on getting some other cells working on this. Here's my immediate uh, objective to you, right? Work on the objectives I've said previously. Uh, uh, this list you've sent me. Um, Tia Markel, she's in New York City. Monitor her. Make sure that uh, she's not acting funny. See if she's exposed. If she is exposed, call me again and we'll talk from there. Ah, uh, shit. I, I need to make some other phone calls. I, I can't stay on this. I'm sorry. Just focus on Tia Markel. And he hangs up. 
All right, I will convey that information to everyone and then also to the rest of our missing teammates. Mm -hmm. So we may be in New York for a little while. Linton yeah. and Brain Freeze, you are sent a barraging series of texts. Right. Um, how do you respond? <laughs> Wake up. Um, I, I, we've had the opportunity to sit here and chit chat for a bit, and you, yeah, this is like one twenty a.m. You've been, I mean, you might even have actually packed up after your after your chat and gone to sleep by now. But that, no, I'm kind of. I mean, that that's up to your individual characters. I'm not going to enforce that. We wanted to hear back, right? From that makes sense. Uh, so you get that back. I've got another sleep. weird question. Uh, to think about um, whatever this number thing is, um, and you were saying something about a prime number or uh, some kind of prime number. I don't barely know we're what that is. Prime. Um, does it seem odd that the target of whatever this number is has to be a math genius? It's not like something that can infect the average person. But the math gene this has to be. It could this be, and you keep using the term virus. Could it be like a virus, like a computer virus, but a brain virus? Makes people well, kill people or lose their minds or I think so. I mean Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're dealing with. It's um because, uh, I mean, it's either malicious that somebody's created it and trying to spread it, or it's just some kind of sick truth of the universe that people are stumbling on. Well, maybe, except that doesn't it seem awfully convenient that it would kill off the smart ones and leave the dumb ones? Maybe that's just my conspiracy thinking mind. Huh. Well, but, I mean, the, the family of seven wasn't mathematically a, inclined. They seem random. Yeah, so some of there the were, dumb people there died were eight too. Ridge but... ways, by the way. Hmm. Yeah, so, so some dumb people died. But... Eight, eight dead Ridgeways and Michael Way, it was a total of nine dead from his mass shooting. Nine. Yeah. I remember. Um, yeah, what if the Russians came up with some sort of number that fries the human brain? Yeah, that's that's what I'm worried about, is that there's some malicious force behind it. How are you feeling, Grant? How am I feeling, and, Handler? And Goat? Uh, I don't know about Goat. But... <laughs> Letting you know. <laughs> I know that Grant's been acting oddly. Yeah. Yeah, Grant was a little bit sloppy and let the number... Yeah. Let... I I got a glimpse of the number, unfortunately. Yeah, Goat just barely was able to see it, and he felt immediately compelled to consume the thing. But <laughs> yeah. is either one of you feel like reproducing it and spreading it around, or no? Well, it already yet. happened. Grant did spread it. Yeah, I, I don't know, Handler. Do I feel like I I, I yes, I I did want to. No, put it, you, put it you out don't. You once, don't but... feel an unnatural compulsion to spread it. I mean. Grant, you especially, you, it made you anxious before, but you've got this, you've certainly got this um, gravity drawing you towards it in a way. I don't know how to better explain it than that, but you don't feel compelled to share it. Okay, so, yeah, I'm not feeling compelled to share it. Um, this goat was just accidentally, I mean, it was, I didn't even realize I had it in my pocket written down. So, well... I don't mean to like interject any trivia, but I seem to have read a book a while back where aliens send a probe to Earth and it asks a whole bunch of mathematical questions, which it promises super intelligence if you answer all the questions, but it's really a bomb. And if the planet is too smart, it blows the planet up to get rid of competition. That's kind of what this might be reminding me of, a number that kills off all the smart people. 
so they can just come and take over. I don't know. I've read too many books. I've seen too many silly movies. Or just random shit happened. He, this kid stumbled upon a number. A virus. And, and it's fucking with him. And it's fucking with anyone else who gets in contact with it. Maybe he's just not was just nuts and right. And you're only scared because you're scared. And things aren't significant. They're just I don't know. But yeah, uh, the if, if, you patterns. Said that, if you said yeah, if if you said they've sent it out to other people, mathematicians, then we're gonna start hearing more murders and more things. We'll have more targets to go to. Well, our our case here is to follow the local um, connection here at oh. Tia. Could you could you email everybody on that list and just tell them, ha ha, I was joking. <laughs> would that make them look any, even further at it? <laughs> Maybe they would throw it out. Or you, the previous email contained a virus. Please do not <laughs> open. <laughs> well, don't be Mike curious. It was just nonsense. Yeah, I don't know. Can we send them a so, virus? Could we send them a virus as, uh, and destroy as a their group, computer? As a group, it is now confirmed that everyone is aware of the message being sent to a bunch of mathematicians. So now Monaco, Brain Freeze, and Lytton need to make this say and roll against helplessness. No. Yeah. Fail. If it makes them dumb. It's easier to get into their apartment. Fail. What D4 from helplessness? 21. You're good. Oh, this is not. What is this? This is no bueno. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, total 36. 36? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pass, it is nothing. Failure, it's a D4. Mm -hmm. Just dread. A horrible feeling in your gut. And just that. It's I don't know. It might be the. All around the, the world before you were even involved in this case. And there is a local math dabbler in New York City that you guys have to deal with. And with that, we're going to end the session for tonight. Uh, our players included Max Meltzer, Kaylin McDowell, Thomas Grimms, Julian Arba, and myself with Sham Sabin as the handler. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean, Spotify, or iTunes. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. Or you can click the super thanks below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Delta Green role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.